everyone, สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome everyone to our Global Wellness Day, 12 Hours of Transformation on Life Celebrations, presented by Chivasom and Sulau Wellness Resort by Chivasom. This seminar is entitled "What Is Wellness." I am Gelblin Sukum Jitanun, Head of Communications at Chivasom, and I am your host today. This session. We will be led by Dr. Tao Friedman. He is a head naturopath and research and development specialist at t i w a s o m And today, he will discuss what is wellness. Dr. Tao completed his under, undergraduate degree in health science at York University, Toronto, Canada. He received a specialized honor with a special focus in sports nutrition. He further his studies through a postgraduate doctorate of naturopathic medicine at the Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine. So now it's time to meet Dr. Tao. Hello, Dr. Tao. Good morning. Thanks very much for the for the lovely introduction. Uh, thanks everybody for joining me today. Uh, today we'll be talking about what wellness is. Just let me share my screen so you guys can see my slides. And please feel free to leave any questions you have in the chat box, and I'll be super happy to answer them after. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Thank you. So today we'll be chatting about what is wellness. I decided to start off today by discussing this because I think it's a word that gets kind of misunderstood or 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 overused. Um, quite often, um, it's really easy to kind of Google and 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 even look around grocery stores and see the word wellness almost thrown around everywhere. So, yeah, today I just kind of want to clarify what wellness means and kind of how we interpret what it is. So, with that said, let's get started. So. I was saying that wellness is really everywhere these days, and if you Google quickly, you'll you'll see the word wellness get thrown around all over the place. Here's a few examples that I uh, I like to check out. So up here, this was a presentation at the the 2019 um, uh, Global Wellness Trend Seminar about wellness fashion. Over here is an Apple Watch with wellness tracking software. Over here is uh, one of my personal favorites. This is wellness pet supplements, and you have calming turkey, chicken, or beef flavored wellness supplements for your pet, or joint mobility supplements for your pet. Here's a wellness candle with healing crystals included. This is world championship boxer Roy Jones Jr. doing cryotherapy, and this is a really interesting one that I get asked about fairly regularly. This is a uh, Herbal um, Botox-like uh, aesthetic injectables, and all of these are marketed as wellness treatments, wellness products. And I guess I would argue that technically the, all of these things can be wellness, but then what is wellness if it includes all of these different things? If you keep googling, you'll also see that. People who try to explain what wellness really is usually talk about wellness having multiple dimensions or different aspects of your life that wellness can be included in. A. But the issue is that there's no consensus here among experts as to what are the wellness dimensions and how many wellness dimensions are there. Looking around, you'll see a lot of people talk about the six core dimensions of wellness. But other people say that there's seven, including career. Some people say there's eight dimensions of wellness, and rather than career, they talk about occupational wellness, intellectual wellness, even financial wellness. There's lots of schools out there that include academic wellness as well. So again, there's very little consensus on what wellness is. One of my favorite pieces of literature revolving around wellness. Doesn't talk about dimensions of wellness, but rather principles of wellness or pillars of wellness. If anybody knows what this is, this comes from uh, the Blue Zones, and they talk about nine different 
principles of wellness rather than dimensions or, or parts of your life. So again, there's no, there's no consensus as to what wellness really means. And I think that that is because a lot of people are trying to break down really large, complicated subjects by using kind of simple buzzwords. And I think to really understand where the term wellness comes from, we need to look back a little bit and see kind of where the word originated from. So what are the origins of, of wellness? And if you look at really, really historical texts, um, even starting from traditional Chinese medicine, traditional Ayurvedic medicine, traditional Islamic medicine, these concepts have been there for a really long time. But the modern use of the word wellness really started just after World War II. In the late 1940s, the World Health Organization really started putting out statements talking about health as a complete package, a very holistic definition of health, that it's physical, it's mental, it's well-being, it's more than just not being sick all the time. And this, there was a very large shift in the 1950s that rather than dying of communicable diseases and infections, um, the, the diseases that really started becoming more prevalent in society were very preventable conditions, um, very degenerative conditions. And there was a big shift in, in thinking in modern medicine. And there was a, a professor, a doctor named Halbert Dunn, who coined the term wellness in the early 1960s. He started doing a lot of work in the 1950s, mid to late 1950s, lecturing about being more than just not sick, right? That idea that real health is not just not having a condition, but it would be kind of optimally well. He called wellness the, the exact opposite of being really, really sick. And this grid actually comes from his lectures. He was one of the first people in kind of modern medicine to really look at the impact that somebody's environment can have on how easily it would be able for us to achieve true wellness, right? You can look at the top left corner of the grid where he was talking about how even in an ideal environment, you can still be unwell you wouldn't necessarily die, but you could still be very unwell. And he called that protected poor health. And even in an unfavorable environment, you can start to attain wellness, but he didn't call it high level wellness. It was emergent high level wellness. So he really started looking at this idea that, that true wellness was a culmination of multiple factors. And this idea that we talk about these dimensions of wellness really comes from, from his um, initial uh, uh, work in exploring this, this field. And it really exploded from the 1950s onwards into the, the very idea of what we think of, of wellness as we see it today. And here's some examples of kind of wellness marketing, the wellness industry that really started to, to, to come into full swing in the 1950s. And it's a lot of the same, same things that we see today. So if you look on the left, these were weight loss ads from the 1950s. If you look at this ad in the middle, this was a tonic that you would drink after you got the flu to start feeling better as quickly as possible. You can see here the after flu tonic. And this is one of my personal favorites. This was talking about safe, clean foods. The idea behind clean eating <laughs> really started 60 years ago. And a lot of what these ads are talking about have not changed, right? The, 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 I, this wellness industry stuff has remained very constant for a very long time. So having said all of that, so what, what is wellness? If we could actually define it, what, 
what is wellness? I like to think that wellness is not a state of being, it's not a treatment, it's not a diet, and it's not a program. What wellness really is, is a culmination of choices that we make each day with the goal of being a little bit better than we were the day before. And that can be in any dimension for any activity that you're doing. It's just putting a lot of conscious attention into the choices that we make each day. And something really important and how wellness is a very individual thing is that as we age, as we move through our lives, as our environments change, as the world changes around us, our goals will change along with that, right? Each dimension of wellness or pillar of wellness is important to different people in different ways. I mean, just look at the last year for a lot of people. Social wellness, mental wellness. Those things really came up to the forefront for a lot of people being stuck at home or not being able to see your family, right? Going forward, things will change again. So each day there can be a different goal, right? And it's about making a very conscious choice each day to be a little bit better than we were the day before. That's what wellness really is. And then the big one is how do we know that we're making the right choices? That's, that's a really big deal. And that's where I come into a lot of this, right? I will say that anything that sounds too good to be true is probably too good to be true right off the bat. The biggest thing is having a trusted source, a professional um, to help guide you along the way. Because it really is with all the marketing, with all the wellness buzzwords, with all the information that gets thrown on us all the time, it's really hard to know if we're making the right choice. So I want to leave you all with, with just a piece of advice that I try to give everybody. It doesn't matter which health professional it is. You know, there's good doctors and bad doctors. There's good naturopaths and bad naturopaths. There's, there's a million people out there who will try to sell you something or, or tell you to do something. And you can ask of anybody these few questions. What can I expect from this product, service, or treatment? How long will it take to get what I expect? And why did you pick this and not something else, right? If you go to a doctor, you go to a physio, you're getting a massage, you're doing anything, right? Um, what can you expect from doing this thing, right? How long do you need to do this? If I was to tell somebody to take a supplement, right? How long should I be taking this for? to see those results. And why did you pick this specific supplement, treatment, whatever, and not something else? And you don't have to know everything there is to know, but you have to trust the answers you're getting back from somebody. If somebody says, oh, because this is the standard thing and I expect 100% difference in a matter of days, you know, those, those are not great answers. But if somebody's really specific and it, it feels like, you know, that professional was really listening to you and making choices based on the conversation that they had with you and your goals. That's, that's how you know that you're on the right path. So with that said, thanks very much for your attention. And I'm more than happy to answer any questions anybody has, even if they're not related to stuff that was, that was on the screen. Thank you very much, Dr. Tao, for that interesting workshop. So we hope you all enjoyed the session. Just to remind you again, if you have any questions, please leave your question in the chat box. Okay. Okay, anyway, so um, you can let us know later. If you have any question, you can contact us anytime. Um, thank you again for joining us. Thank you for your time and it's quite early morning. So we hope again you all enjoy the session and have learned some useful tips from today.
the next session, Sustainable Tips to Improve Indoor Air Quality at Home with Dushan David, the Corporate Director of Sustainability at Chiwasom, will start in 15 minutes and we will continue on the same link. Oh, we got some questions, Dr. Tao. Okay, social wellness. How do you define this? Yeah, so social wellness, there's, there's a few dimensions to, to social wellness, but the big thing is um, having a support system, right? Whether it's your friends or your family, but it's um, having people that really listen to you and that you, you connect with, right? So social wellness <clears throat> is, is about, what's the, what's the best way to explain it? Rather than saying not feeling alone, it's, it's, it's people that you can kind of rely on. It's, it's, it's also one of the, the, the pillars in, in the blue zones as well. It's the, the sense of, of community and the sense that you belong to something larger than just yourself. And I know that over the last year, that's, that's definitely one of, the, one of the things that seemed to have fallen off for a lot of people, um, not being able to attend the same social events that you were attending in the past, whether it's going to the gym or even being maybe part of a Rotary Club, right? Um, and being able to find ways to do that over the last year for sure, it's been challenging for a lot of people. Um, I mean, now with the advent of Zoom, right? We've been, <laughs> we've been trying to, you know, find find ways to still do it. Um, but yeah, I, I hope that answers the question. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tao. Yeah. Next question, very interesting. How do you stay focused? Uh, stay focused on. I think maybe because I think the most difficult things is how to maintain the wellness lifestyle, right? So oh yeah. sure, how yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Focus? It's the, the biggest thing is is understanding your goals, right? Like I was saying, goals change a lot, and it needs to be what's the way to say it? Not not a measurable goal, but but uh, something that's attainable and something that's really clear, like. A lot of people say, you know, I just want to get healthier. And that's, that's a really murky kind of thing, right? If an athlete was to come to me and say, you know, I'm interested in improving performance in this aspect, it's a bit easier to kind of come up with a plan. So having a clear goal, I find helps a lot. And then staying focused is having a plan when you know you're going to screw up. We all, we all know when we're liable to make mistakes, right? I don't buy gigantic bags of potato chips to have at home because I know once I open the bag, it's gone. You know what I mean? And I already have like a list of, you know, restaurants and places I like to eat at um, and knowing kind of what I'm going to order even before I get to the restaurant. Do you know what I mean? We all know when we're bound to make mistakes and kind of planning for that can, can help. Does that, does that answer the question? Great. I do believe, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, next question. Do you think it's possible to create a blue, for, blue zone in Thailand? Yeah, so for, for those that maybe don't know in, the, in, our, in our group here this morning, blue zones, um, it's a man named Dan Buner, if I'm not mistaken, uh, kind of compiled a bunch of research that was going on all over the world about areas of the world where people live to be over 100 years old and, and a healthy 100 years old, right? Not debilitated, like still moving around. So there's, I think, Loma Linda, California, Sardinia. Uh, so there's these places in the world where people live to be quite old and quite healthy. And there are um, things in common, these nine principles, between all of these places. So is it possible to create a blue zone in Thailand? I don't know about creating, right? Because that's not 
it's not just about building something that will cause this magical effect to happen. It's, it's a combination of the, the culture, the soil, the, and, and, and the, the, the people there. So I do feel that it's definitely possible to do a lot of the things that the Blue Zones ideology puts forward to do, right? Um, some of the principles are eating until you're only about 80, 90% full, right? Not overeating. Finding ways to move around um, as part of your daily life. Uh, having purpose in your life. Um, having good social networks and people that you love and care about. So there's all kinds of things that are involved in that. Um, do I think it would be possible for maybe certain communities in Thailand to start having centenarians, like people that live to be really old and really healthy. Yeah, I do think it is possible to do that. Um, so yeah, I hope, I hope that answers clearly. Thank you, Dr. Tao. Yeah, um, these another, are good questions. <laughs> yes, she said, thank you very much. <laughs> Next question, um, how do you feel about the wellness concept at Sulao Wellness Resort, our sister property? Yeah, I think it's great. Um, I think one of the really cool, interesting things that also kind of goes back to the social thing a little bit is there's um, a focus on family at, at Sulao, which isn't really something that we do a lot here at Chivasong, um, but we have slightly different goals, right? Um, but at Zulao, there's a lot of kind of family-centric stuff. And they're also looking at some interesting ancient texts that I mentioned uh, during the talk, um, traditional Islamic medicines, right? So again, kind of like using all the local herbs and medicines that they had there and the focus on family. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's fantastic. And I'm excited to see kind of the programming that comes out. I mean, maybe I know a little bit more than other people because I'm involved in some stuff, but it's exciting. Thank you very much. Yeah, if you thank you again for all of your questions. See you Bye. Later. <laughs>